community, but it's great to see you all. I want to stay around here for that exact reason. I don't want to be a full head only kind of thing. Well, for this jingle, um, it feels a bit, does it not, like we're starting a, a new kind of phase of the show, I think. Uh, just a quick show of hands, parents, who don't mind. Is this who is this the, your eldest child that's been coming to the show? Okay, so hands down. Who, who have you been here before? This is not. I'm not going to talk about the details about season two just yet. I'm going to leave that to Mr. Bush. Uh, and we'll, we're going to hear from Tom and Amina in the next 10 seconds to hear how they make their decision. I want to try and just set a little bit of wider context here, which is where are the pupils in their kind of educational journey in the UK? And I'm going to use the analogy of a, of a tightrope walk from being a child to being an adult. And it's my view that when you enter year 10, you're probably right in the middle of that tightrope, where the wobbles are at their greatest. It's a really tricky stage. It's the hardest stage, I think, of their teenagers, year 10. If you talk to them, any teacher, they'd probably say it's that critical. It does start a bit in year nine. I, I suspect, parents, you may have noticed that year nine, you start to have a, a few challenges when it comes down to parents. And do you know what? It's not to do so much with academics or junior people. It's far more to do with friendships. How popular am I? That's the biggest cause of their anxiety, particularly at this stage. They're also still a long way still to go to adulthood going back to that analogy of the tightrope, but they're also a long way from childhood too. They're right in the middle. They still don't really know who they're going to be and what their career's going to be, but they definitely know they're not a little kid that wants to be glued to the pole anymore either. And they're there in the middle, wobbling like crazy sometimes. It's a stage of life where puberty is, is right of the, in the midst of all that. Uh, party starts possibly alcohol, and then you've got this horrible, dreaded concern about drugs. And it all happens in and around year 10. And it's a really difficult year. So what advice can I give you, really? And I'm, I suppose I'm going to talk in a little bit to pupils and parents' journeys. Um, three things, really, I want to say about this. Of course, choosing sensibly is important, and we'll do lots of that today. But there are probably more important bits of advice to give. In no particular order, the first bit of advice I'd give, and I don't, I'm not sure if I'm giving this to parents or, or pupils here, but perhaps often more pupils, is year groups have become three. Some year groups pull together, and everyone is pulled up in how they do in their pupils' groups. And some year, year groups, the dynamic is such that the opposite happens, and they drag one another down. I really want you to be a year group that is supportive of one another. Don't make life any more difficult for one another than you need to, through unkind things, through making people feel left out, um, etc. Because being a year 10 pupil on that tightrope is already hard enough. And pupils, the culture within your year group have a lot to do with that culture and I want the culture to be right because all of you benefit as a result. All of you, your grades will go up and you will be happier. Second bit of advice really is don't start being tempted to just study and nothing else. There's such good evidence to say that the pupils that do best in their GCSEs have balance in their life. And they keep their co-curricula going, they keep their hobbies going, they don't just get anxious and worry about nothing but academics. That helps nobody. It's all about developing self-confidence and self-esteem. And so often the source of self-confidence and self-esteem is doing things that you love doing and that you're really good at. And for many people, that's outside the classroom, not necessarily in it. When you're really in 
find academic work easy, easy-ish. Some of you possibly do. Um, academic work feels great. But for some pupils, it's really hard work and can be bruising at times, make them self-doubt. Um, and it's tough. And your source of your confidence needs to come from things outside the classroom. And the last bit of advice I'd like to give, if I may, um, is the importance of your attitude and how hard you work. What grades you end up with at GCSE is so much dictated by your attitude to every day you spend in school. And I've been teaching for a number of years now, and because we've been teaching for even more, and the sheer hard work, fantastic attitude of making every lesson count, some pupils that find academic work difficult end up with some fantastic GCSE results for them, and we're really, really proud of them. Some bright pupils, or reasonably bright pupils, mess around, don't work very hard, uh, worry about that later, and they underperform. And they don't need the school to tell them they've underperformed on results day, at the end of year 11. They know they've underperformed. Sometimes, though, for those that find academic work hard, is when you work hard and still don't do very well, it doesn't feel great, and there's always that temptation for you to take the easy option and stop trying. And that is a, a much urged you to, 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 to not do that. Um, you're not failing if you're working hard, okay? And trying your best. So, I don't know if that's helpful or not, I just want to set that wider context. Go with your heart, pick the right choices. Your success will come with your attitude, your hard work, the support of your peer group, and keeping your hobbies and interests going all the way through to school. I hope this is a really useful evening for all of you. Ask lots of questions, people, um, because I want you to be really involved with these decisions and listen to some very good advice from Mr. Bush. Um, okay, I can actually project my voice, but this is just for the live streaming. I want to talk to you about um, what we, how the evening is going to work today. Um, what we have is a standards parents evening with this options talk tagged on. When you want to, when you go and meet your TV teachers, appointments are all set out, laid out like this. Um, there's a free chairs, so it's optional if you want to bring your child along with you. Perfectly okay if you want to. It's entirely per parental choice about that. Some parents like it. Some children hate it, so um, it's up to you with what you want to do. Uh, there's going to be an optional presentation from uh, myself and the head. You've heard from the head that this is my section. And there's going to be a presentation from Tom and Amelia. And I'm going to discuss the options pro forma and the process for selecting your options. Now, just a little bit of background. When the head asked, have you had any older children? If you've had children who did GCSEs pre-2017, they will have done a, a different system to your child who is here today. This is because of the divergence of English and Welsh qualifications at GCSE. Um, we've got, we're on the pathway of we offer in linear A levels and it's logical therefore that we offer similar qualifications at GCSE. The main difference about these qualifications are on the next slide. Um, the reason we've done this is that if you're in a maintained school in Wales you've only got one route through GCSE provided by one examination board. And we've decided that we like the choice and flexibility of doing, uh, doing four examination boards gives the head of departments a little bit of variety, otherwise you have a monopoly on the, the specifications. Um, thanks, Alex. Um, also, we think that the linear exams, because the GCSEs that you know, your children are going to be doing, are all terminal. There's coursework in subjects like art, but otherwise, no coursework. There's no modules, so all the exams are at the end of the two years. Now, there's a lot of debate about which is better and which is worse, um, but that we think that these uh, linear exams 
they help to develop the children in preparation for university, because universities tend to have more linear type exams and assessment modules. We're also wanting to stick with the majority of it GCSEs. So there's about 500,000 kids in the cohort, and therefore we're with the majority of the UK, uh, rather than just being within Wales. So there's the summary of the English Pathway GCSE. Um, increasing stretch and challenge is something I didn't mention. Slightly more content, um, so be aware of that. And then there's the grading, which is most interesting, because we're into a, probably familiar with an A star to E grading, with A star to C as a pass grade. That's completely gone. Uh, it's phased in, first of all, with, uh, with English, uh, in 2017, then it was everything in 2018. So now all the grades that you're going to get in 2019 to 21, heavens, um, that's going to be nine to ones. And I'll explain the actual grading system next. That's how it works. So you, the A star, nine up there, um, that is like an uber grade. It's to provide more discrimination at the top it's sort of roughly the top 5% of the half, it used to be 90% to get an A star, now that nine is probably 96, 97% is right at the top. They did a statistic last year, but how, how many pupils in the UK were going to get 10 nines or nine nines? And the figure was something like 200 in the whole country. So uh, it was actually was a little more than that. We had somebody last year who got nine nines and an eight. So uh, we are able to compete at the very highest levels. Um, you'll see that level seven, there's nothing wrong with level seven, that's an A. And then there's this distinction at the bottom between a strong pass, a five, and a standard pass, which is a four. Almost all universities require a standard pass, a four, in English and maths. Uh, in order to access the subject. So that's something different that the pupils are going to have to get used to. We're now, we've gone through a huge process of change over the last two or three years. When teachers get said, right, you're gonna have new A-levels, new grading systems, that's come in. You're gonna have new GCC, new grading systems. These are gonna be phased in over 2016 to 20. It's been a huge amount of work um, for us in the school in order to transition our pupils to these new GCSEs. We think we've done it successfully for this reason. That's our results in 2018. Now it's 2016, 2017, 2018, and these are the grade proportions. Um, you'll see in the years uh, 2017 and 18, 2017 is a, is a transitional year when not all GCSEs were on the new system. 2018, all on a new system. So over 50%, 52 point something percent of our grades at GCSE were equivalent to the old A and A star. If you look at that, over 30% were the A star plus the A star star. This was a group uh, cohort, not dissimilar to Christ College cohorts that I've known over uh, many, many years. Um, very similar to the cohorts of year um, 10. Now, if they can achieve this sort of results, this is what Mr. Pearson is saying, this is the thing that your children should be aspiring to. These are the results that you should be able to get, but you won't get them if you don't work. I guarantee that a b talent without work won't equal success. Okay, that's absolutely certain. You need, you're never going to wing it on these GCSEs. They are too difficult. The other thing about linear GCSEs is you're working on year 10. You have to start taking notes in year 10, getting good um, resources together because you're going to have to be retested. So there's lots of tests in year 10, isn't there? Lots of tests. Um, and we're very proud of those. We think those are fantastic results and comparable to anybody else in Wales. Better than most in Wales. Um, and we're also going to talk about option blocks. Um, these are the option blocks. Option blocks are constructed to allow me to write the timetable. Um, there's, there's a principle within the option blocks where we try to allow, for example, two languages, or if you're really good at, you really like... Um, um, humanities, you've got religious studies, you've got geography, you've got history. We have block D for the creative subjects. We try to, uh, we've got a high demand for geography and history because they're two of our sort of premier subjects which lots of people do and lots of people are, can access. So that's why they're appearing twice 
and geography appears twice, appears three times actually, in order to give some more flexibility. I would love to be able to say to you, what do you want to study and I'll do it for you. But that's not practical within a small school. So you have to make some choices. Um, we make ours in year nine. Some schools make their choices in year eight. So at least you're a little bit further along the journey before you have to make that. Um, are these blocks, you're going to ask me, are these blocks flexible? There's bound to be somebody asking me that. Um, I've actually written the sixth form timetable, so I know how it's structured. Um, do, do come in, don't hide in that door. <laughs> Good boy. Um, so I, uh, I know that, um, what I can do with this. I mean, if there was, for example, a great outpouring of, um, of uh, demand for one subject to move, I, I might be able to look at it, but I couldn't make any demands. But you have to let me know in your option form. Um, I'm sorry, I won't be able to meet everything. I'll try what I can do, but I can't meet everything. So in order to then make that choice, what, what should you actually do? Well, just to reiterate what the head said, you've got to enjoy the subject. Children who do subjects because they think they have to or because the parents tell them or because the parents said, I was good at that subject at school, so I can't understand why you aren't, so you're going to do it. That sort of advice doesn't usually help. Pupils know their own minds pretty well as the head said. Um, should I consider careers at this stage? Don't project yourself too far forward in the next journeys. I want my child to be a, therefore I will do this. Look at their strengths and weaknesses and build on these. And then the decisions that you make in subsequent, you know, what will happen is you'll make decisions again at, G at, AS, at um, A level and you'll make decisions again at university and your child's careers and, and chosen pathways will emerge will emerge, they're very difficult to force down at this stage. But if you want any advice, do come and ask. Am I good at this subject? Um, it's really obvious, if you've done it and you've got lots of good grades in your grade review, that's probably indicating it's something you're gonna do well at, at GCSE. So am I good at it? Yes. Do I like the look of a GCSE course? Look at the booklet, it's a little bit more detailed, it will give you the structures. Is that what I want to study? Look at the history course. Do I want to do those courses? Um, look at the geography. Where do I go? Do I want to do some practical field work? What, what's my opportunities in languages? Look in a little bit more detail and don't always think of it as year nine. What's it like in year nine? Oh, it's going to be like that in year 10. It's not. It's going to be different. Be, it'll be a little bit more focused, a little bit more targeted, a little bit more pressure, but there'll be also greater variety, I think, in some of the subjects than you're perhaps used to in year nine because you're doing more of them. Whereas you might get two periods of art in year nine, you'll get four in year 10, much more chance to develop your whole, um, your whole portfolios. Do I have a balanced combination? Because we have six compulsory and four uh, optional, I, I'm, I'm not particularly worried about this. We all say, let's do a language. If you can do a language, fantastic. Um, it will really add texture to your GCSE program, and it's something that's very valuable later. But if you can't do French or Spanish or Welsh, don't do it. Um, are the blocks flexible? I'll answer that. And avoid misconceptions. Misconceptions might be that is an easy subject. Only a certain sort of pupil does that subject. I, I, you also need to think, I like that subject because I'm going to be taught by Mr. or Miss X. You might not be next year, so don't make your subject choice based on the fact you like the teachers. There'll be new teachers coming in, there'll be changes over of teachers within the school, so focus on the subject itself. And that really um, concludes my talk. I want to say where the teachers are because we've had to slightly change this. Um, at the end of this talk, this screen is magically going to go up to reveal downstairs we've got maths, English, and history. So those of you, you'll see the teachers, they've all got name plates. Um, in the gallery, which is the, the bit overlooking the chapel, we've got science. I've also put Mrs. Owen, who's Welsh and additional learning needs, because it's a, uh, a little bit quieter up there. So if you want to see Mrs. Owen, she's up there. And then everybody else in uh, uh, it's geography, uh, RS, creative arts, they're all in the studio, which is the room which is directly through that wall, which can be accessed through that door or through walking across the corridor at the back. Um, I'm going to be available, as is Mr. Pearson, um, after this, because we don't have appointments, we don't teach this year group. So try and catch us early if you can, if you need any advice. P pupils, talk to your parents, have discussions, talk to your teachers, okay? 
That's the way to find out. But I'm going to pass on to Tom now, who's going to talk about his experience. Hello, I am Thomas Colbert, and I am in Year 10. Firstly, what I want to say is that although choosing your options seems daunting and a lot of responsibility at a time that you may not feel ready, it really isn't something to feel anxious about. Luckily, help is never far away. Your teachers and tutors will always be open to discuss the topic with you. These choices are important, so you want to choose the correct subjects. For example, I chose geography, Spanish, business studies, and music. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you to choose those exact subjects because what is correct for me may not be correct for you. When I was in your position, my family and I discussed what the options were and which were best for me. My decision was final, of course, however, they were a great help. The reasons I chose my subjects is that I was intrigued by the topics within the curriculum. And if you were interested in the subject, it makes learning it so much easier. Firstly, choose the topics you enjoy that fascinate you because studies show that you are 20% more productive when you are happy compared to when you are not. Choose subjects you are good at. Although it seems obvious, you should choose subjects that you will do well in. GCSEs are about showing the abilities and the intellig intelligence that you possess. Therefore, choose the subjects that express, about, express that about you the most. Think about your past and future. For example, I have played the guitar for many years and am now at an advantage for my music exam because I can read music and play an instrument. Also, think about what jobs you are interested in and what courses you may want to do at A-level, as far away as it may seem, because the GCSEs are foundations for your future. You can create new foundations later on, of course, but this is your first opportunity to make these decisions, and it's the start of your career. A good piece of advice is to talk. Ask as many questions as you can to parents, older siblings, tutors, and older pupils within the school. Do not base your decisions on friendship groups or what everyone else is choosing because you are unique. GCSEs are a level up, so you need to concentrate and work to the best of your ability, and you need to stick to it. There are plenty of other times for social To conclude, I hope I have helped in some shape or form that you can think about your decisions through a new perspective and that you make these decisions stress-free. To reiterate, think about what you enjoy, are good at, and your past and future. I hope you think hard and make the right decisions for you. Thank you. I am very pleased that Tom's advice was exactly the same as mine and we hadn't got together <laughs> and talked about it. Uh, Millie, do you want to do yours? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amelia Giordano and I'm also in year 10. Firstly, I'm just going to say me and Tom didn't compare notes on what we were going to say beforehand, so we actually ended up saying a pretty similar thing. So apologies for the repetition, but hopefully it means you can trust what we're saying a bit more. Um, so a year ago, I was picking my GCSE options, which you all or your children are going to be doing soon, picking which 10 subjects to continue with for the next two years. For my GCSEs, I take Spanish, RS, History, and Photography, along with the mandatory English, Maths, and Sciences. There are a few things I think are important to bear in mind when making these decisions. Firstly, choose a subject you enjoy as your first consideration. You don't want to end up spending two years studying a subject you hated, just because you thought it would be easy or because all your friends were taking it. However, it is also very important to play to your strengths. Take subjects you will be able to achieve in that you're confident you can put in work towards and get a good grade at GCSE. Make sure you also reach out of your comfort zone and try something you might not have tried before. For example, I started taking photography this year and I was worried I would be bad at it or I wouldn't enjoy it. However, it has turned out to be one of my favorite subjects and I'm now considering it for A-level, so I'm very glad I went on, on a limb and made that choice. As you're, making your, as you're choosing your options in the next few weeks, remember to think about what, you're in, what you enjoy, what you're confident in, and what new things you might like to try. If you need any advice, feel free to talk to my ear and ask about the different subjects you're considering. See what your friends are choosing, but don't pick your subjects based on other people. Finally, don't stress about making your decisions, but make sure you take your time and consider your options carefully. Thank you. Um, the uh, point that uh, Millie made about new subjects as well, um, Mr. Thompson, who is the head of business studies, um, he's around, he's made himself available for half an hour between 7 and 7.30 if anyone wants to talk about what, doing, what it involves to do business studies. Um, so that's the end of that part. We're now on to the bit where you find out about how your children are doing in the classroom. Uh, all the teachers have all got nameplates. Um, 
creative arts and um, geography and languages up in the studio, science in the uh, gallery, maths, English, history down here. I hope you have a very productive evening. Thank you. <laughs>